Well, hello, and welcome to the fifth of the five wave behavior videos. So, and I should say the first wave behavior had two videos. So this is actually the sixth video in this series. So we've described four behaviors so far, interference, reflection, diffraction, refraction, and now this fifth one is on the Doppler effect. I do want to caution you, those terms, reflection, refraction, and diffraction, are all so similar in the way they sound, make sure you pay close attention to which is which. Now, the Doppler effect is actually one that you're probably more familiar with by hearing it rather than seeing it. So I'm going to pay it, play an audio clip of a, a little video from YouTube that will describe and show you and let you hear the Doppler effect better than anything that I could do on my virtual ripple tank. And then I will get my ripple tank going. Okay. So listen to what we have here. I'm not going to show you what it is. Just listen. Okay, so that change that you heard there, I'm going to replay it. Now, of course, you probably guessed that was a car horn. Okay, and if I had you guess what was that car doing, a lot of you, because I did this in class, would probably correctly guess that the car was passing by you. One way to tell that is that it did get louder and then get softer. But I'm not interested in loudness and softness. That's not what the Doppler effect describes. The Doppler effect describes what happened to the pitch of that sound. Now, for you non-musical types, I do have to describe pitch. Pitch is the highness or lowness of a sound, not the loudness, not soft or loud, but high and low. So think of high as like the right side of a keyboard or a soprano singer or uh, perhaps a flute or piccolo. They play very high notes. And a low pitch sound would be the left side of a keyboard or a bass singer. Men tend to have low pitch voices and ladies have higher pitch voices. Or think of a musical instrument like a tuba or a bass cello or something like that. Those are low pitches. Okay, so we heard that this car horn sounded as a higher pitch sound as it approached and a lower pitch sound as it left. And that's exactly what the Doppler described, the Doppler effect describes is that change in the pitch. Okay, so let's write down what we experienced there and then I'll show you on the simulation why that happens. All right, let's get things in focus here. So hopefully you can see what I'm writing. Make sure you're not muted because I do talk and say things as we as we write here and don't fast forward. That's kind of cheating yourself. So I'll describe the Doppler effect as the I'm going to use this adjective. The apparent change in wavelength and frequency of a wave due to motion. You can always pause if you're not done writing. I want to say apparent because the wavelength and frequency of the car horn as it's emitted from the car horn is not changing. But what we heard was different because of the motion of the car. Okay, that's why we say apparent. It just seems to be that way. Do particles do this? I'm going to say again, this is a no. Four of the five wave behaviors have been not shared by particles. The exception is reflection. And the real life example, we actually just heard it. A car horn, or you often hear this as well with a siren, because we tend to stop. Hopefully, the driver stops when they hear a siren, and the siren will pass by you from behind or from in front of you, and you'll hear that drop in the pitch the same way. This also happens, this is something related to astronomy. Light waves can experience the Doppler effect, but you have to be having the, the object moving super duper fast, like actually close to the speed of light. So we call this, in astronomy, a red or blue shift. One of the class activities I'll have you do in class, we'll, 
we'll show you um, and, and describe to you what the red and blue shift means, okay? So here is a picture of what would be happening during the Doppler effect. But let me show you the simulation that I took this picture from because I think it'll make a little bit more sense to you. Let me pull up my virtual ripple tank for this. So here is something giving off a, a nice wave. This is just something emitting perhaps sound waves, could be light waves, but you see it's moving on the screen. In this particular moment, it's moving up and it changes the spacing between the waves as it moves, okay? So as it comes back down here in just a moment, I want you to look in front of the motion right now. You see how these waves are kind of squished together? That means the wavelength of these waves seems to be shorter than what's actually being put out. And behind the wave, the waves are spaced out with a larger wavelength. So that's why we hear a difference. When you have shorter wavelengths in front of the moving object, more waves per second hit your ear. That's a higher frequency. And frequency to a sound wave means pitch. So higher pitches in front of the moving object and behind it, or once it's past you, you're going to get longer wavelengths hitting your ear, and that corresponds to lower frequencies, lower pitches, okay? So higher pitch in the front, lower pitch behind, okay? So let's now take a look at our picture here, and I've shown you with this arrow, this, at this moment, the object is moving downward, okay? So we see the nice squished spacing between the waves here and the stretched out spacing back here. So let me kind of describe both parts of this. Behind, behind the moving source, again, the source of the wave would be whatever's making the wave. It could be an ambulance, it could be a car horn. We have the wavelength, remember this symbol, lambda, is longer, more spaced out. And so the frequency or pitch is lower there. And then here in the front, in front of the moving source, The wavelength is shorter. It's almost like, if you think of it, like right after it emits one of those waves, it's moving towards it and ends up a little less space between each of those crests. So in this case, the frequency and pitch are higher. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit more of this together. All right, so higher pitches in front of the motion, lower pitches behind. And I will add, um, in this, I'm not going to get into the details too much at this level class, but some of you watching this might not be in my class. This also would work if instead of moving the source of the sound, if you move yourself, if your ear moves towards a siren or towards a car horn, you also pass more waves every second. That would make the pitch sound higher than it actually is. And as you pass by it, and you're going away from it, it would just be like you being behind a moving source, where because as you're kind of trying to run away from the waves, fewer of them hit your ear every second, meaning a lower pitch that you hear. Again, this is what you're perceiving. It's the apparent pitch. It's not the actual pitch. To the person in the car traveling right along with the car horn, there's absolutely no difference in the pitch whatsoever. That's why you can't do this yourself as you're driving, hit the car horn and expect to hear a difference. You have to be the person hearing the waves approaching you or leaving, okay? All right, so I think that's gonna do it here. And I'll zoom out so you can kind of see the big picture. Make sure you've gotten everything that you need. And if not, you can always go back and replay part of this if necessary. So that's it for the five wave behaviors. Any of those that you want to go back and watch, of course, they are still available. Thanks for watching.